And you're right, they often do wait um, yeah. and when they're alone and they can. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all at church, outside, but still, it's a lovely day. We're so glad you're here. Um, our opening hymn, now remember, you can sing as long as you kind of sing softly into your mask, but you can sing. It's hymn 441, and stand as you are able or if you want to, but hymn 441 to begin our worship this morning. In the cross of Christ, I glory. Hymn 441.
Bless the Lord who forgives all of our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is our only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbor's heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have, have mercy on us, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and afflictions of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire, what you promise, that among the swift and the very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joy are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The prophet foresees a new covenant between God and the people whom he loves. This covenant may be, will be marked by the Lord's Spirit in their hearts rather than on tablets of stone. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I'll be their God, and they should be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to one another, each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 119, verses 9 to 6, responsively by half verse. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. I treasure your promise in my heart. 
Blessed are you, O Lord. With my, with my lips will I recite. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees. I will meditate on your commandments. My delight is in your statutes. Through obedience and suffering, Jesus opened the gates of the kingdom. He is named High Priest forever. A leading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he, as he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he, heard, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Jesus teaches that God will be greatly glorified by the suffering and death of his son. Following his prayer to God, a voice from heaven is heard. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, <clears throat> The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. <coughs> Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will, my, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you. Help us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, in whose service is perfect freedom. Amen. Amen. On Wednesdays during Lent this year in the evening, there's about 15 of us who have gathered on the Zoom platform after the 5 o'clock Healing Eucharist to discuss the book, The Way of Love, A Practical Guide to Following Jesus by Scott Gunn, who's the Executive Director of Forward Movement. How many of you read Forward Day by Day? 
So uh, Scott Gunn is the head of that organization, and we have, uh, in the notes, have run several of his uh, forward um, daily move, uh, movement emails, and also uh, he's a personal friend and a friend of this parish, and he's supposed to come here and preach someday, but COVID has kind of put that on hold. But at any rate, this is the last book we have. If anybody wants to join us, it's still not too late. We're only on chapter five, and we're doing one chapter a week, so we won't run into Easter a little bit, but come see me afterwards if you want to pick this up, and we'd be glad to have you join us. In the chapter entitled Pray, I think this was about three weeks ago, we discussed one way of praying that involved meditating or praying with Scripture, where you read a story from the Gospels, preferably, and then in a prayerful spirit, you kind of imagine yourself in the story. You could either be one of the characters in the story, but most often it's best to just kind of imagine yourself witnessing the events of the story, or as kind of a, uh, you could kind of be an invisible bystander. So what you do is, as you're in that prayerful state, you ask yourself, you know, what do you see? What do you hear? And how do the characters in the story interact with you? So as I was reflecting in this manner during the past week, preparing for today, it became clear to me that the line from the gospel, Sir, we wish to see Jesus, that's got to be one of the more surprising requests ever put to the disciples in the gospels. I can only imagine the quizzical look given to these Gentile inquirers by Jesus' disciples. So much must have been passing through the minds of Philip and Andrew. So I imagine something like, these guys aren't from around here. Does Jesus even know them? Or maybe they were thinking, you'd like to see Jesus, wouldn't we all? But I'm sure he's got other more important things to do besides visiting, visiting with a couple of Gentile hicks from the sticks. Which is ironic, actually, because being from... Galilee, Philip and Andrew were actually the hicks from the sticks. <laughs> Galilee. Uh. However, when we look past the surface of this text from John's Gospel, we realize something is a bit off in this story. Allow me to explain. The Greeks who come inquiring, they represent all the Gentiles of that region. People who were, incidentally, not allowed in the temple, even though they may be God-fearing. And they came to inquire whether they could see Jesus outside of the temple precincts, outside of the temple, an allusion, no doubt, to the direction that the Gospel of John understands the message of Jesus intends to go, to all people, not just the chosen ones. And so the Greeks ask Philip, and Philip goes to Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together go see Jesus. And they ask Jesus. And Jesus, in typical fashion in John's Gospel, promptly changes the subject. Abbot Andrew Marr, monk and blogger of St. Gregory's Benedictine Abbey, an Episcopal monastery in Three Rivers, Michigan, says that Jesus changing the subject is typically a literary pointer to something more. He writes, look again, there is a message under the service, surface. Interestingly, if you notice, we never hear if these Gentile visitors ever meet with Jesus. But what we see, sir, we wish to see Jesus, what we see is something else. Seeing in John's gospel almost always stands for something beyond physical sight. It can include it, but it's often beyond physical sight. To see is coded language for illumination, for gaining understanding that may not be plain to the eye or the ear. And Jesus goes on to say what they will see. The Son of Man being glorified, God the Father being glorified in the Son, and all the people of the earth coming to Jesus when he is lifted up. Could this be a reference to his forthcoming crucifixion? That's both possible and an easy way out of this text. Looking on it backwards from a future point of view, I mean, we all know how uh, Jesus' story ends. We can read this quote, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself, end quote, followed by John's editorial comment, he said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die, and it's easy to assume that that would be the one and only meaning of this text. But I had discovered, and those of you uh, who have been in the lectionary Bible study, maybe, or EFM or other Bible studies, very little in Holy Scripture is that easy and that straightforward. For instance, Jesus gets lifted up Every time we serve others in his name, whenever you give to someone in need, pray with or for someone who needs or wants prayer, whenever you feed the hungry or help house the homeless, 
or clothe the naked. You are lifting Jesus up for all the world to see and understand. We illumine the life of Jesus for all to see whenever any one of us lives the life of Jesus in our neighborhood. Jesus gets lifted up in the way we live our lives in service to others. We must live daily with this purpose in mind. Leave everyone you meet with more love for having seen you. That's how Jesus gets lifted up. With every act of caring and courteousness and kindness, we lift Jesus up. Don't be too busy to listen. Don't be too t hurried to help. Don't be too timid to let your life speak. God simply and unobtrusively asks this from us because God wants what God knows is best for us and offers us a life in this world that few of us totally realize, yet from which all of us benefit. We read in Jeremiah today, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and no longer shall they teach one another or say to the other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. One way you can read this text is that God desires to make this way of living as easy as possible for us. And nearly 2,000 years later, countless people who identify themselves as followers of Jesus, who call themselves Christian, still don't get it. We still set up hurdles and theological litmus tests. We devise, devotional, uh, devise denominational doctrinal statements to give assent to. We compose confessions and creeds to clarify contradictions. All the while, God commits to making the path as wide as possible. Jesus assures us that when he is lifted up from the earth, he will draw all people to himself. Therefore, no one on earth is left out of all people. While at the same time, no specific criteria of entry or qualification is expressed. Now that, to me, seems like good news. That God is for all of us. And loves us so much that God plants within us his law. Written on our hearts. A way of life. A way of love that Jesus exemplified. And into which he invites us to follow in his steps. Deep inside our hearts, we already know this is true. We know the difference between right and wrong. We know the difference between selfishness and generosity, between compassion and cruelty, kindness and rudeness. We know it within our hearts because our hearts, in fact, are the writing tablet of God. And when we live according to that law, written by the finger of God on our hearts, our lives glorify God and our very lives lift Jesus up. Theologian and Lutheran pastor David Loza writes, quote, the point of faith in Jesus isn't just faith or comfort or satisfying spiritual desires. No, the point of following Jesus is that we might be drawn more deeply into the kingdom of God through our love for, service to, and sacrifice on behalf of those around us. Jesus comes to demonstrate God's strength through vulnerability, God's power through what appears weak in the eyes of the world, and God's justice and love and mercy and forgiveness. And Jesus calls those who would follow him to the very same kind of life and love, end quote. Today, we enter the fifth week of Lent as we approach Holy Week, the beginning of the end of a very long and weary year for planet Earth and all who live on it. People talk about having Zoom burnout and face mask fatigue, and I get it. <laughs> I mean, we've been asked as a society, as humankind, to make small sacrifices for the greater good, and even that seems an unfair imposition to many people. I get that. I don't understand it, but I get it. And the risk of resurrecting, a fam and at the risk, I should say, of resurrecting a familiar phrase that turned into a horribly overused marketing ploy in the 90s. I do not merely want to reflect on what would Jesus do, but rather, what would Jesus want me to do? If I'm seeking to faithfully follow Jesus, to imitate his life and message, then I must reflect on 
What would Jesus want me to do? That's WWJWMTD, which is a horrible acronym, not worth repeating. But what is worth repeating and reflecting upon is the brief summary of the law placed on our hearts by Jesus himself. You heard it at the beginning of the liturgy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that on these two principles, love of God and love of neighbor as oneself, hang the entire law and the prophets. The whole of the Bible that Jesus studied is summarized by those two phrases. Some of you may remember a story I told on Christmas Eve of 2016, my first Christmas as your rector here at Advent Episcopal Church. The Right Reverend Jake Owensby, the Episcopal Bishop of Western Louisiana, wrote about an experience he had in seminary. Apparently one of his professors, a professor of church history, noted for giving his lectures at a fast and furious pace, would often sometimes drift into an aside. Owensby writes, one day he said something like this to a classroom full of aspiring clergy. When you get out there in your churches, people are going to come looking for Jesus. And all they're going to get is you. <laughs> when you get out there in your churches, people are going to come looking for Jesus. And all they're going to get is you. Frankly, I think that applies to all of us, not just clergy. And from this, we can conclude two things. First, that even in this day and age of more and more people being spiritual but not religious, people still wish to see Jesus. Jesus still intrigues people, and they want to see him. That's the first thing. People still want to see Jesus. Second, if people come to us seeking Jesus, and all they get is us, then that has to be enough. We have to be enough. And since this is the way that God set it up, and the way that Jesus put it into motion from the beginning nearly 2,000 years ago, here we are, still talking about Jesus and inspired by Jesus, and opened up by Jesus, and transformed by Jesus. And then, I guess we can safely conclude that it continues to work. By our actions and our words when necessary, we still lift up Jesus for others to see and to know, to be opened by and transformed by. All that Jesus wants, all that God promises, is that if we're faithful in lifting up Jesus, God will take it from there. God will carry us and all those who seek God through to the kingdom, to eternal life, a life that can start now when we live like Jesus taught us to live. Because in this world, people are looking for Jesus. In our churches, people come looking for Jesus. And all they're going to get is you. And if all they're going to get is you, then that is going to be enough. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, it is only when we love one another that we can truly say together as we stand, we believe, we believe in, one in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Son through God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning come from the Book of the Common Prayer, Enriching Our Worship. Uh, you'll find the response to each petition in the bulletin or on the screen of the live stream. For the Church of God in every place, that it may persevere in faith and hope, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. mercy. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer, our bishop, for Debbie, Gary, Janet, Janice, Meg, and Timothy, our clergy, for Sharon, our licensed lay pastoral care minister, and for all bishops and priests and deacons and all other ministers, that they, that they may have grace to build up your people in love, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O God. Christ, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O God. Christ, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O God. Christ, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O God. Christ, have mercy. For a spirit of reconciliation and a right relationship with our Native American relatives, that we may, that we may be a healing presence in this place. We pray to you, O God. Christ, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O oh God. Christ, have mercy. For the, for the men and women of our armed forces and other national service, for all troops and civilians in harm's way in regions of conflict around the world, for doctors, nurses, all hospital personnel, and all first responders and their families, and for those affected nationwide and around the world by the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray to you, O oh God. O oh God. Christ have mercy. For those affected by natural disasters and those cities affected by civil unrest, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For all who live and work in our city and in several cities and towns surrounding us, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For the, blessing, for the blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For all who have committed themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For Joan Duchemin, Amanda Reese, Gary Indian, Erica Hutchinson, Jean Peel, Chris Turner, Marguerite Evans, and Shannon McLaren, celebrating birthdays this week. And for Dick and Jean Sully, and George and Susie Walston, celebrating anniversaries this week. We pray to you, O oh God. Christ have mercy. For our mission companion diocese, the Diocese of Western Mexico, 
Bishop Ricardo Osanaya, for the Episcopal Church in Navajo Land, Bishop David Bailey, for St. Luke's Episcopal Church, Carson Post, New Mexico, and for the life, work, and ministry of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, Sedona. We pray to you, O God. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they have, they, that may have they that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O God. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, "Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not the sins, but the faith of your church." And give us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with, you. with you. Peace. Please exchange the peace with one another, but maintain your social distance. Thank you. Peace be with everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, uh, if you can have a seat just a moment. We have been, uh, because of the uh, way we've been doing church, COVID and all that, you know, uh, we haven't been able to do our regular birthday and anniversary blessings and maybe some time before we do that. But it is nice to include them in the prayers, you know what I mean? It's kind of nice to hear it mentioned. Well, today, Dick and Sully, uh, Dick Sully, Dick and Jean Sully, over here, the Sullys, are celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. So, could I have screwed that up anymore? But anyway, congratulations, 70 years. I said, gosh, you guys got married at like 14 or 15. That is so cool. <laughs> you know, we're just so happy for you guys, and um, what, a, what a real blessing it is. You still know each other, right? I mean, <laughs> okay, good. Good. Uh, let's see. So communion will be by station. There will be a station over here and a station over here. If you need a gluten-free wafer, come up here to the front of the altar. We'll get that for you. I'm trying to think of what other, I, it wasn't supposed to be windy, but it's gotten windy, but we're just going to play through, as they say, on the golf course, and we'll just deal with the hooks and the slices as they come. Um, is, there a, is there an offertory hymn? No, just a communion hymn and a closing hymn. You're going to play some offertory music, correct? Excellent. All right. Um, the offertory sentence, Deacon Lewis. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into God's court with peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts 
and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacrament, that they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ Christ has died, died. Christ Christ is risen, risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. We sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And on the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, that by him and in him, in in unity with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. In union with those persons unable to participate, communion with us today, let us say the prayer of spiritual communion. 
May Jesus, I believe that you are truly pleasant in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive the sacrament of body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with grace, Lord Jesus. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you as in me in this life and the life to come. All are welcome to the Lord's table. body of our Lord Jesus Christ. just had me surgery too. <laughs> the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you get it? Thank you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this, your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with more perfect will and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'd like to thank our audience members of the live stream for being with us. We hope that you've checked in either on Facebook or on YouTube. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week at 10 o'clock. We're still trying to figure out about inside or outside because it is Palm Sunday and there's the Palm Sunday passion and we need microphones and we'll figure something out. <laughs> Just pay attention to the Friday note about worship on Sunday and you'll know where to go at 10 o'clock. Thank you for being with us. Drive safely on the way home and enjoy this beautiful day. <laughs>